My name is Trey, and we're with Nipper Electric, and today we're going to show you how to do a recessed can installation. We're going to start with step one. We're going to get a measurement of the room, divide all the walls evenly, and lay out our six to five cans. Okay, here we are. We ran into a little bit of a snag because what we like to do is typically divide the walls evenly and space the cans out. But we ran into a joist, the very first one. So what we decided to do is come off of each corner 30 inches and then also 30 inches, which seems to work out well for us. It also spaces nicely with the, the vents there. Uh, you've got to always take that into account when you're laying out cans, what's already in the room and how it's going to please the eye. So right now we're finding this center can, which we're going to run the first can here, the second one in the center and the third one where the end of the tape measure is. And then we're going to mirror it on this back wall. All right, step two, what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that where we're installing the recess can actually doesn't have any joists in the way. And what Zach's doing here is he's using a swivel screwdriver that allows you to, to check all sides where the six inch can is going to be installed. You see we have a free pathway there. Great. We can get ready to drill our holes. Okay, step three, what you're going to do is trace the outline of the recess can. And the actual diameter, even though we're installing six inch cans on, is actually six and three eighths. So what Jacob's using here, make sure you're using the pencil. It really makes a difference later if anything has to be painted. It's just a better way to do things. So once you've got your hole, take your drywall saw, get it started with a tap from your lineman pliers. And then just cut your hole. But next we're gonna show you a better way we, we like to do it. Okay, here's our preferred method of how we actually like to drill the holes. Instead of using the method of drawing it out then trying to cut it with a drywall saw, taking all that time, we're gonna use a six and three eighths hole saw, okay, attached to just your regular drill. And the thing that we like to do, there's actually a bowl you can pick up at any local electrical supply house. It actually covers up around the hole saw so that when you're installing it, all the dust that previously was going to fall to the ground and make a mess is trapped inside this bowl. So you just got to find that initial hole and then push up. and easy and let's take a look at all that dust and traption now that's the way to do it okay step four we've cut our holes see we've got them all laid out everywhere we want them and this works best for two people you're gonna feed your wires hole to hole just jump them consecutively you see we started here that cut one runs over like I said there's somebody in the attic so once you get the link down you want come back and cut it Move on to the next one. Okay, step five. We've got our wires in for all six of our cans. And the next step is going to be installing the new switch. Currently, this switch operates a receptacle for a lamp. Uh, the homeowners we're working for don't necessarily need that or want it. So the switch leg that goes to the receptacle, we're just going to wire it in to be constantly hot with the other receptacles in the room. At this point, we're going to want to cut off power. Okay, cut that power back on. It's always good to double check it. The tool he's using is it's a trade name of, called a tick tracer. That's your Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay, keep, get that power on, cut it off. Okay, now we're ready to move forward. Okay, what he's doing here, we've got the power cut off. He's just removing the old switch. He's gonna disassemble all your wire nuts, anything connecting the wires to the switch or together because the entire box is actually gonna be removed from the wall. Uh, being that you're gonna have that two by four inch hole, it's much easier trying to fish the wires in the wall up to the attic to feed our new recess cans with that void in there. Currently, you'll see there's a fiberglass box. So right now what he's doing, he's just disconnecting everything and making sure that the wires can pull freely when the box is removed. Okay, step six, 
we've removed the switch, disconnected the wire. So we're actually going to remove the box. In this situation, the box is fiberglass. So a screwdriver, a pair of lemon pliers, bust everything up. If you've got one of the, the newer uh, plastic blue boxes, they're not going to fall apart like that. Basically, you just have to pry. And where you're going to try to aim your screwdriver at is that the actual nails that fasten to the stud. Okay, step seven. Like I told you before, we have somebody up in the attic. So in the previous step, we removed the box that held the switch. We've got our wire separated. Of course, step five, we've got our power off. So now step seven, we're gonna be drilling in the top plate of this wall, and we're gonna actually make a pass through up into the attic so we can run our wire to the recessed cans. Go ahead, Jacob. You'll notice if, if he's actually hit where he's supposed to, you'll see the chips fall. Okay, step eight. We've got our hole drilled up there. We're going to pass a wire from the closest recess can cut out. Your partner in the ag is going to grab it. He's drilled a hole up top in the last step. So now he's going to take it and All feed right. it back down. And it's as simple as that. Just catch the wire. There's your switch light going to feed power to your new cans. Come on down, buddy. All right, step nine. We've got our wire in from the switch leg, and we're gonna actually show you what it takes to connect the can. So when you open it up, they actually have these built-in connectors nowadays. So when you strip your wire, they literally just stab in. Nice and convenient. Okay, as you can see from the ceiling, the wire's just hanging down, so you're wondering how is it gonna connect? Well, there's actually these tabs on the end that take a flat edge screwdriver, pry the ends out. And these are what actually hold the wire in place so they're not moving around. It's not just a loose wire going into a hole. Because if you notice, there's actually a second metal tab that's gonna hold it in place. Okay, now we've got it all ready. We've got our wires stripped, ends are ready. These, the, the actual bare portion of the ends was gonna stab into your connector. Now we're gonna put it inside the, the junction box on the recess can. When you've got it through, you wanna make sure that the actual Romex is actually passed through so you can see that it's in the box safely and the stripped wires are just gonna now connect to your stabbing wire nuts. Color to color, simple as pie. Great one. Step 10, wire connected. And now we're just gonna actually put the can inside the hole we cut out in the previous step. All right. Remember it's a six and three eighths hole. Oh, Should fit nice and snug. the cans fit in there's actual uh, prongs that come out on, on four different sides that actually pinch cinch hold the recessed can to the drywall this is actually what actually mounts the can from moving a couple of hits with the screwdriver where you can't do this by hand you do have to actually use a screwdriver to, do it in, to make sure it's properly secured Step 11, we've got our can installed. We've got the wires connected. This is actually the final portion. The part you're gonna see is a finished product. We go ahead and install this uh, LED recess trim. If you look underneath, you're gonna see a place where you, you screw a light bulb into. But what's unique about these cans today, they actually come with an adapter kit. Screws in just like a light bulb. It's got a junction point that actually connects the trim. And pop out that plastic piece, protector. Throw it to the ground. Needs to screw in just like a light bulb. The actual LED just clips in. At this point, you've got arms, and you basically just push it up, and it springs out and holds it. There you go. 
there's your finished product. All right, step 12, back to the switch, getting to the home stretch. You're gonna knock the tabs out. These are the parts of the box where the wire goes in, very similar to the cans. They just kind of spring out. You don't wanna knock them completely out because they are there to hold the wires in place. So once you've kind of bent them back, make it a little bit easier on yourself. You're gonna take each wire. Of course, you can see the new wire we added, which connects to the cans and then the existing wires. Just feed them in one by one. This can be a little bit not difficult, but just time consuming, trying to fit all the wires neatly in there. You want to take your time and not make a mess of it. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. All right, you got the wires in. The box fits snugly, that's what you want. And at this time, you, you see the two screws on the opposite ends of the box. You screw them in again, just like the cans. The, the actual flaps tighten to the drywall, and that's what holds the box in place. Alright, step 13. We've got the old work box installed. We've went ahead and connected the wires. There was no way, basically all the old wires, color to color, they now become your hot wire. All the neutrals get tied together. They do not connect to the switch. And then our new black wire from the, the wire we added for the recessed cans goes on the opposite side. Therefore, basically all you're doing is just breaking with the switch, connecting the two wires. So at this point, we'll screw it in and then we'll put the wall plate on. So here's our finished product. All our cans are in. Total of six. And we're going to cut the light on. Voila. Again, these we put on a dimmer. You can see them nice and low for the mood if you want. We're just not into the brightness. And we can cut it back up. There you go. Easiest way to improve the value of your room.